Shalom Israel, Most High Christ bless. Welcome to another edition of 15 Minutes with the Captains. My name is Captain Zephaniah, and to my left, Soldier Joel. And today's topic is Raising Revolutionists. Raising Revolutionists. What does the Bible have to say about Raising Revolutionists? But first, let's get the definition of revolutionary. The definition of revolutionary, involving or causing a complete or dramatic change. Read that again. Involving or causing a complete dramatic change. Involving or causing a complete dramatic change. That's what we're looking for in our communities. That's what we're looking for in our nation. That's what God is looking for in our nation. All right. Complete change. We have to change. That's what the Most High God requires of us. And we're going to read the scriptures to see how we cause that change, create that change, create that revolution. Read. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 7. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 7. Start at verse 6. Verse 6. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart shall be in thine heart, in your mind. Read. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Always unto thy children. Seriously unto thy children. Dedicated unto your children. Read. And shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. When you're sitting down in the house with your children, go over the scriptures. Study the scriptures. Apply the scriptures. Read. And when thou walkest by the way, when you're walking by the way, when you're walking outside and you see things, apply the scriptures to it. You see a woman dressed out of order? Tell your son or your daughter, what does the Bible have to say about that? What does the Bible say about the way that woman is dressed? You understand? This is how you, this is how you apply the scriptures. This is how you teach the scriptures unto your children and you cause that change, that revolution. Read. And when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and when thou liest down before bed, you pray with your children, okay? And when thou wake up, when you wake up in the morning, you pray again with your children, all right? The Bible is telling you how to conduct yourself with your children. Go to uh, the book of Psalms, chapter 94, verse 16. <clears throat> Psalms, chapter 94, verse 16. Read. Who will rise up for me what against... Does, excuse me. Go ahead. Start all over. Read it again. The book of Psalms, chapter 94, verse 16. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? What does God ask? Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Who is going to rise up against the evildoers? Those who commit sin. Those who are against the children of Israel. Read. Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Who will stand up for God against the workers of iniquity, against the workers of sin? So God is looking for those who are going to stand for him. Against who? The workers of iniquity, against the workers of sin. So what do we have to do? We have to raise those men, those women who are going to stand on the side of God. Real revolutionaries, real creators of change in our nation. All right. Let's go to the book of Sirach now, chapter 30 and verse 1. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 30, verse 1. Uh huh. He that loveth his son causeth him oft to feel the rod. He that loves his son causes him often to feel the rod, meaning you correct your son. You teach your son. Correct your son when he's doing wrong, okay? But what does society say? You can't hit your son. We're not telling you to beat your son until he's bloody. We're not telling you to break a bone. No, we're telling you to correct your son. With what? With the rod. That's what the Bible says. That's what God says, read, that he may have joy of him in the end, so that you may have joy of your son in the end when he's grown, read, he that chast chastises his son 
shall have joy in him. He that chastises, meaning corrects his son, ha shall have joy in him. Read. And shall rejoice of him among his acquaintance. Among your, your fellow friends, among your, 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 your acquaintances, you shall rejoice of him. Look at my son. You're going to be proud of your son. Why? Because you raised them correctly. You won't be embarrassed. All right? Read. He that teacheth his son grieveth the enemy. He that what? Teacheth his son grieveth the enemy. He that teacheth his son grieveth the enemy. Grieves the enemy. Who is the enemy according to the scriptures? Let's see. The book of Nehemiah chapter 5 and verse 9. Let's see who the enemies of God, who the enemies of Israel are. Go ahead. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 5, verse 9. Also I said, it is not good that ye do. Uh -huh. Ought ye not to walk in the fear of our God? So Nehemiah said, ought ye not to walk in the fear of God? Meaning keeping his commandments, observing his laws, doing his laws. Read. Because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies. Because of who? Because of the repro reproach of the heathen, our enemies. Because of the reproach, the hatred of the heathen, our enemies. That word heathen translates to nations the other nations are our enemies god has told us the other nations are our enemies so when we teach our children we grieve the other nations they want us to remain in sin they want us to commit sin but what we do with the word of the most high we teach our sons change correction all right and that's how you create a revolutionist that's how you raise a revolutionist, one who is going to create change in his community, one who's going to create change in his nation and make his parents proud. All right. Give me the book of. No, go back to uh, Sirach. Let's go back to Sirach. We're not done there. Go ahead. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 30, verse 3. Mm -hmm. He that teacheth his son grieveth the enemy. So when you teach the, your, the Most High's laws to your son, you grieve your enemies, the other nations. Read. And before his friends, he shall rejoice of him. So he, or she, he shall be proud of him. Read. Though his father die, yet he is as though he were not dead. His father, though his father died, it would be as he, he didn't die. Why? Because the same way his father was, so will be his children. So will be his son. Okay? Read. For he hath left one behind him that is like himself. He hath left one that's like him, like himself, who behaves, conducts himself just as his father. Read. While he lived, he saw and rejoiced in him. Uh-huh. And when he died... He was not sorrowful. His father did not die with a sorrowful heart. Why? Because his job was done. He raised his son right. He was proud of his children. Read. He left behind him an avenger. He left what? He left behind him an avenger against his enemies. He left behind him one who was going to avenge him against his enemies. And who is that enemy? The enemy is not your brother that looks just like you. The enemy is not... The, the so-called Hispanic or the so-called black man, Native American. No, those are your fellow Israelites. All right. He left behind them an avenger of his enemies. Okay. Read that again. He left behind him an avenger against his enemies. An avenger against his enemies. That's who we are. Revolutionists who will avenge our parents against our enemies for the, for the atrocities for the for the for the for the murder for the rape robbing of our children the children of Israel we will avenge our parents against the enemies the other nations who had their hands in our captivity read and one that shall requite kindness to his friends we shall requite kindness to his friends meaning a fellow israelite you understand who keeps the commandments the bible tells you how to raise your children no longer will we have single parent households, deadbeat fathers. Now we know how to raise our children. Now we know how to raise revolutionists who are going to create change in the nation. That's what God is looking for. And that's what the enemy hates. That's what the enemy grieves. You understand? 
Give me the book of Titus, chapter 1, verse 5. Go ahead. Read. The book of Titus, chapter 1, verse 5. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city, as I had appointed thee. So this is Paul talking to Titus. All right, read that again. For this cause left I thee in Crete. Uh-huh, he left him in Crete. That's right, this is Asia Minor where the Israelites were scattered, dispersed. Read. That thou shouldest set in order the things that, that are wanting. thou shouldest what? Set in order the that things. thou shouldest what? Set in order the things. Set in order. Set in order the things that are what? That are wanting. That are lacking in our nation. Like what? Uh, families, marriage, okay? Well-raised children. That thou made a set in order the things that are wanting, lacking. Read. And ordain elders. And in, what? And ordain elders. Ordain elders that are going to what? Create that change. Create that revolution. Read. In every city. In every city, wherever the Israelites are scattered. Read. As I had appointed thee. As he taught Titus, he is to teach in every city where the Israelites dwell. And raise up what? Men, women. That are going to create that change, that revolution. And it, I said women because it's not just men. You understand? Give me the book of Titus chapter 2 and verse 4 now. The book of Titus chapter 2 and verse 3. Uh -huh. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as become of holiness. Uh -huh. Not false accusers. Not liars. Read. Not given to much wine. Not drunkards. Read. Teachers of good things. Teachers of what? Good things. Things know how to twerk. Good things know how to act like a prostitute. Good things. Teachers of good things. The older women are to be teachers of good things to the younger women. Let's see those good, what those good things are. Read. That they may teach the young women to be sober. To be sober, clear-minded. Read. To love their husbands. To what? To love their husbands. I thought they had to have boyfriends. What does the Bible say? To love their husbands. To love their husbands. Read. To love their children. To what? To love their children. If we applied these scriptures, if we taught these scriptures, there would not be abortions by the millions in our nation. You understand? Read. To be discreet. Uh-huh. Chaste. Keepers at home. Good. Obedient to their own husbands. There it is again. Obedient to their own husbands. Read. That the word of God be not blasphemed. That the word of God be not blasphemed. So the most high is about order. The most high is about change in our nation. You understand? We have to apply these scriptures in order for this revolution to take, to take, to take action. To take action in our, in our communities. All right? It takes change. It takes real change. And it takes men doing their part, women doing their part, understand, and raising revolutionists. Give me the book of 1 Samuel chapter 10 and verse 6. Go ahead. The book of 1 Samuel chapter 10 and verse 6. Mm -hmm. And the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. When you keep the commandments, what happens? The spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. The spirit of God will come upon thee. Read. And thou shalt prophesy with them. Thou shalt what? Prophesy with them. Uh huh. And shall be turned into another man. And shall be what? Turned into another man. He shall be changed into another man. Turned into another man. That's what the, the, the word of the Most High does. That's what keeping God's commandments does to our men. Change, revolution. That word is not a scary word. It may sound scary, but what? It's a good thing. Revolution is a good thing. Change is a good thing in our nation. All right? Give me the book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 19. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 19. Behold, at that time, I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halted, and gather her that was driven out, and I will get dumb praise and fame in every land. So those that the Most High raised, he will get them fame in every land. We, The Israelites are getting fame now in every land. Why? Because we're in every city, every state, every country 
creating change in our nation, raising up prophets. All right. That's going to what? Bring down this nation, bring down this government, bring down this wicked captivity that we're in called Babylon the Great. Read. And fame in every land where they have put, sorry. And fame in every land where they have been put to shame. In this land, we have been put to shame, but the Most High will bring us fame, notoriety for what? For creating change for those who stood up for him against the workers of iniquity. The Bible is telling you we are going to get fame for what we do. All right. Give me the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 9. Ahead. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 9. Uh -huh. For I think that God has set forth us, the apostles last. So the Most High has set us, his apostles last. Why? As it were appointed to death. As it were appointed to death. We are the apostles as if it were appointed to death. Malcolm X was put to death. Martin Luther King was put to death. Hugo Chavez, allegedly brain aneurysm, put to death. All right. But these men did not have the words of the most high. They weren't keeping the commandments. The apostles, us, the prophets of the most high are. Read. For we were, for we are made a spectacle unto the world. We are made a spectacle unto the world. The world looks at us like we're crazy, like we're in a cult. Why? Because we stand for the most high's word. We keep the commandments. We stand for change in our nation. Real change. Read. And to angels and to men. Uh-huh. Now, give me the book of First Chronicles, chapter 16 and verse 20. Because it says, as if, as if it were appointed unto death. But look at what the Bible says. First Chronicles, chapter 16 and verse 20. Read. The book of First Chronicles, chapter 16 and verse 20. Uh -huh. And when they went from nation to nation. And, that, and when they went from nation to nation. Just like the bishop, the deacons, the captains, officers, we go from nation to nation, just like the, 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 the prophets of old. Read. And from one kingdom to another people. We go from Africa to Europe to the Caribbean, South America, Central America. Okay. Read. He, he suffered no man to do them wrong. He what? He suffered no man to do them wrong. He protected his, his disciples. He protected his prophets. You understand? He suffered no man to do them wrong. So while we doing this work, keeping the commandments of the Most High and the faith of Christ, the Most High will protect us. Read. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes. He did what? He reproved kings for their sakes. This is why the bishop can speak the way he does. This is why the deacons, the captains, the officers, we speak the way we do against kingdoms. Why? Because the Most High has our back. He will protect us. So we cannot be afraid of revolution. We cannot be afraid of raising revolutionists. We must create change in our nation. Give me the book of Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 20. The book of Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 20. Uh -huh. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity. Although we in the, we, the Lord give us the bread of adversity for breaking his commandments. Read. And the water of affliction. The water of affliction being afflicted here in America over 400 years. Why? Because we broke God's commandments. Read. Yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. Our teachers are not going to be removed into a corner anymore. This is why you see us marching in Chicago, in Memphis, all throughout the cities. We form like Voltron. Okay. We form like the men of the most, like the army of God. All right. And you see the teachers before your eyes, no longer hidden in a corner. Read. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers. Your eyes are seeing your teachers on the internet, in the streets, teaching, marching. All right? Why? Because the Most High ordained it so. He's raising revolutionists to create change in our nation. Read. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. So when you hear the prophets of the Most High teaching, 
All right, you think that the word is going out and it does and it does not go out void. Somebody is listening. Somebody is going to affect change in their life. Read. And when ye turn to the left, sorry. And when ye turn to the right hand, and when ye turn to the left, everywhere you go, every corner, every city, every country, you are seeing the the men of the most high doing his work. Revolutionists have been raised before your eyes. Give me the book of uh, Ezekiel chapter 37. The book of Ezekiel. This is prophecy being fulfilled right before our eyes. The book of Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me. Uh -huh. And the breath came into them. And the what? And the breath came into them. The word of God entered into them. Read. And they lived. And they what? And they lived. And we lived. We lived with the word of the most high God. Life is breathed into us. Read. And stood upon their feet. An exceeding great army. And did what? And stood upon their feet. An exceeding great army. And it stood upon their feet. An exceeding great army. The revolution will be televised. All right? The revolution is here. Now it's time for you brothers and sisters to join us. Stand up for the word of the Most High and create change in your community. All right? So with that, we say shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.